Is that a Jason okay. Dunst talk T-shirt you're wearing? What the oh hell? yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Jason's in the building hosting AFL 360 over on the other channel, and uh, we're all contractually obliged that when Jason's in the building, we have to wear his T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. I love He's going to be happy when he sees this footage tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get uh, you straight what a, to what the what tribunal, head, uh, Brownie. Toby Green, I think it's been downgraded, yeah. hasn't it? His uh, his ban. Yeah, it got down to a one-week uh, tone. So down from from two weeks down to one week, obviously, they were trying to get off. But GWS football manager Jason McCartney. So just see there. Look, I think it was a football action. He was clearly trying to uh, fend off Patrick Dangerfield. Dangerfield did slip, which lowered his body height. I thought he would have got off, and they did have precedence this year. A couple of other players have got off with a similar action. Now... Jason McCartney, the GWS football manager, said just after that tribunal but that you'll hear more for it and more from it or more about it. So I'd say they'll be going to the appeal tribunal. Brown, I have to ask you, has there been a fair bit of inconsistency? I mean, you mentioned before we saw Buddy get off as well with these head-high bumps yeah. and elbows as well because Joel Selwood, different situation, I mean, could be seen as a very similar situation, I should say, and just gets fined. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Tara, that Joel actually lined him up. You know, so he didn't have really any intent there for a football action, did he? So you actually think intent-wise, his is actually worse. Now, Sam Taylor jumped up. He's a tough kid. He didn't get injured. I think what the AFL didn't like was the fact that Dangerfield ended up in hospital with a bruised larynx. So um, I just still thought, though, on precedent, which you're allowed to use at the AFL tribunal, that on previous cases, last year in the grand final when Dangerfield knocked out Vloston and Bailey Fritz this year for Melbourne, that... They had no other choice but to throw it out. So I can't help but think it's the Toby Green effect. And we know how much, how hard he plays the game. He's such an important player. He's had indiscretions in the past and I think he gets judged a bit harsher than other players in the competition. Yeah, all right, look, just uh, get into this one because after issuing that statement of apology for racist remarks at an Adelaide Reserves game, now Taylor Walker has taken another step releasing this video of an apology to Robbie Young. Robbie... <laughs> Thank you for accepting my apology. You've shown huge courage and support for me. I want to apologise to you and your family, to the Adelaide official and his family, to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and their communities for the pain, hurt and disappointment I've caused. What I said was racism and it's totally unacceptable. I'm going to lean on you, Robbie. I'm going to lean on the AFL and others around me to support me. Thanks, mate. Now, there's been a couple of takes on this, Brownie. What did you make of it? This seems obviously genuine remorse. What did you think about the decision to do it and how it played out? Yeah, I think it was genuine remorse. I spoke to people that uh, obviously have been around Tex uh, of recent days and he's incredibly remorseful. Uh, he would be hurting a lot. Uh, that doesn't... Uh, doesn't give him a leave pass from what happened. It was unbelievable. I know Tex pretty well. He's a good person. Um, so I don't know what was going through his mind. But, uh, you know, we are a forgiving nation. Um, so he's copped a... You know, I think it's a reasonable penalty. It, it, it bridges over two seasons, three weeks this year, three weeks next year. But the, the biggest thing is, he, he, through his actions, he needs to redeem himself and get his forgiveness that way. Um, so, but... Look, I, I know it's difficult, you know, I'm not an Indigenous person, so it's difficult uh, to, to speak from experience, but all I know is, you know, I, I think if we just admonished him from the game entirely, um, you know, I, I think we can do better than that. I think there can be a better outcome and uh, hopefully Tex will see him play AFL football again and uh, redeem himself, really, because it's just a shocking situation in, the 20, in 2021, the world we live in now. Yeah, it feels like it's a never-ending conversation in, in that yeah, regard. But exactly. Brownie, back on the field or someone who's not going to be on the field anytime yeah. soon, um, Josh Bruce. So what does this do in such a close competition to not only the Western Bulldogs' chances, but everything... It was such a horrible situation, but yeah, mainly the Bulldogs' um, chances, but in a yeah. wider sense, how, how many of these injuries can teams at the top cop, given how close it is? Well, the key forwards are the most important players on the ground, Adam, as you know. And uh, <laughs> so, but no, they, uh, they, you know, it's a big loss, I think, because Tim English, they've lost their ruckman as well. So Tim English, you know, he'll have to play more in the ruck. He'd be required forward in Bruce's absence. So it certainly makes it a lot harder. They've got the be deepest midfield in the competition, but uh, I think they've gone from the favourites now to probably on the second rung. 
Hey, Brownie, it's Fletch. I'm um, just wondering about the grand final. Last time I yes. went to a grand final down there at the MCG, I was banned. So I'm hoping <laughs> it goes to Perth. Can you give me any insight on where it'll be? Because I'm keen to go. But I'll... I was, I was working that day as well, and all I remember was coming out of the... We'll stay in, um, I was staying in the same hotel as you as Hindy, you and Hindy, and it was about midday, and I walked into the elevator, and Hindy's joined the, jumped in the elevator. He had no pants. He lost his <laughs> pants somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he can't this take you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he got you banned. He said, big yeah. fella, where do I get some pants from? It's 12 <laughs> o'clock before the grand final. <laughs> Uh, that's how he walks so, uh, around here all the time, Brownie. All yeah, he the does. Time. It was a funny look, but uh, yeah. So you boys, uh, you boys were on fire that day. But hopefully the grand finals, at the uh, that venue that day, Fletch. Hopefully it's at the MCG. And I think the Victorian government will do everything they possibly can to hang on to it. Uh, they won't want to give it up after giving up last year. And I, I think if I was a betting man, uh, I'd back in the uh, the game to beat the MCG. Right, just quickly, uh, Melbourne put themselves back at the top last night, but it wasn't without its drama. Now, least of all, a play being delayed uh, for lightning. We've got pandemic delays, storms, yeah. obviously a plague of locusts, but there they are. They had to go off for about 20 minutes. Yeah, it was unbelievable. I, uh, I went to bed after the lightning strike. I didn't think they'd come back on, but uh, they did, and West Coast, it's sort of, they must have got struck by lightning because they came out and uh, they actually they were a different team. They played a lot better, nearly stole the game from Melbourne, but Melbourne were the better team, and... Um, yeah, it's the first time I've seen it. The last quarter went for 70 minutes. So well done to all the crowd for hanging around and watching there at the end. And I think the players would have been happy to hit the showers, Melbourne, and uh, they had to come back out there. And they probably played like that. They played as if they'd already sang the team song. Yeah, well, that was, it's just an excuse, actually, for us to show the greatest interruption in AFL history, the night the lights yeah. and the vision went out at Waverley uh, in the AFL. It was terrific. It was all a bit of fun, as you can see here. They were all terrific. It just uh, suddenly turned a little bit Lord of the Flies. Uh, it's Fletch and Hardy. When you can't set fire to stuff, what do you do? You steal the goalposts. <laughs> steal the goalposts. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, that was unbelievable footage. They actually had to come back and play the rest of the game. I think there was a quarter and five minutes left. They had to come back on the Tuesday night and replay that last quarter. I love it. Yeah, you'd be as players. So, yeah, unbelievable situation. Brownie, thank you very much. Lovely to chat to you. Catch up again very soon. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everyone.